River otters and sea otter. While river otters and sea otters might appear similar at first glance, the two exhibit many striking differences beyond their aquatic habitats. River otters hunt in both freshwater and saltwater environments and are able to spend significant amounts of time on land. Sea otters, on the other hand, are coastal marine mammals and live almost exclusively in the water. To eat and sleep, sea otters float on their backs, a behavior not seen in river otters. One major difference between sea otters and river otters is their size. Although they are the smallest of all marine mammals, sea otters are far heftier than their riverine counterparts. Males can reach about 41 kilograms, and females 27 kilograms. River otters weigh about 4.5 to 15 kilograms, depending on the species, and if females are smaller than the males. Beyond their weight, sea otters also have longer bodies than river otters. Though their flat tails are shorter, river otters boast a sleeker build than sea otters, and their long pointed tails can make up about a third of their body length. River otters use their long pointed tails and all four paws to swim whereas sea otters rely mostly on their short flat tails and two back paws to navigate in water. Fur thickness is another key physiological difference between river and sea otters. Sea otters have a uniquely thick pelt with about 26,000 to 165,000 hairs per square centimeter, the densest coat of any living mammal species. A number of behavioral elements also distinguish river and sea otters. Exclusively a marine species, sea otters consume food found in their aquatic habitats, such as sea urchins, crabs, and shellfish. They characteristically float on their backs and utilize rocks as tools to crack their hard-shelled prey. To sleep, they float on their backs, sometimes holding on to each other to form rafts, which prevent them from drifting away. Unlike sea otters, river otters are able to spend significant time on land and are opportunistic, feeding on whatever is most easily obtained in rivers, on land, and even in brackish or saltwater environments in coastal areas. They often hunt for fish, frogs, and crayfish, and forage for crabs and mussels under rocks. River otters reach sexual maturity between two and three years of age and often produce multiple pups in each litter. Sea otters mature more slowly and produce only a single pup at a time. Sea otters frequently position their pups atop their stomachs to guard them while swimming. On hunting trips, mothers sometimes wrap their offspring in a protective layer of kelp and leave them to float along the surface. Very young baby sea otters are unable to sink because of their buoyant fur river otters, in comparison, travel with their pups alongside or shelter them in a burrow along a riverbank. Coral snake and king snake. At first glance, the coral snake versus king snake distinction can seem borderline impossible, but these two reptiles are worlds apart in terms of how they live, hunt, and defend themselves. Both are colorful and slithery and live in the wilds of North America, but one is venomous, while the other is an expert mimic. The vibrant coral snake has potent venom, New World coral snakes, native to North, Central, and South America, have a distinct color pattern, bright red bands, yellow bands, and black rings that alternate along their body. Coral snakes deliver their toxins through small but effective fangs. When a coral snake bites, it uses a powerful neurotoxin that can paralyze its prey, affecting the nervous system and quickly shutting down vital functions. They typically feed on small snakes, lizards, and frogs. King snakes are non-venomous, but they bear a striking resemblance to the coral snake. Scarlet king snakes, in particular, look like coral snakes with their red, black, and yellow bands. But black bands separate red and yellow bands. If you're ever in doubt, check their color patterns closely. Coral snakes have yellow bands touching red bands, while king snakes have red bands touching black. King snakes are constrictors, which means they kill their prey by wrapping around it and squeezing tightly until the animal can no longer breathe. While they eat small snakes, lizards, and rodents, they can kill and eat venomous snakes, including coral snakes. Their resistance to venom makes them a top predator in the snake world, earning them the name king snakes. Coral snakes use venom to paralyze their victims, while king snakes use constriction to suffocate them. Their diets overlap a bit, since both species eat small snakes and lizards, but king snakes have the added ability to prey on venomous snakes. Coral snakes are a bit more reclusive and live in more tropical or warm environments like southern Florida. While king snakes have a wider range and live across North America, hawk and falcon, you see a large bird soaring through the sky at top speed. But what was it? Your friend says it's a peregrine falcon, but her partner says it's a red-tailed hawk. Can you resolve the great hawk versus falcon debate? Distinguishing between these birds of prey can be tricky. Both hawks and falcons tend to favor open hunting grounds with high perches, and they're both big, fast, impressive hunters. But there are a few key differences. A hawk is a bird of prey in the Accipitridae family, which includes buzzards, eagles, harriers, and kites. Most hawks are part of the genera Accipiter or Budeo, but some buzzards, harriers, and kites, and even some falcons, are called hawks. Hawks prefer open spaces with a few high perches, like cliff ledges or tall trees. 
A falcon is a bird of prey in the Falconidae family. There are almost six species of falcons, the most famous of which is probably the peregrine falcon, Falco peregrinus, the fastest animal in the world, at least in the air. Falcon wings are long and pointy. Their pointy wings help distinguish falcons from hawks. Hawks have rounded wings and broad tails, while falcons have long pointed wings and narrow tails. Like hawks, falcons can live almost anywhere. You can find the peregrine falcon, for example, on every continent with the exception of Antarctica. Some falcons migrate while others stay put. Hawks tend to glide or hover while hunting, whereas falcons use rapid, powerful wing beats and high-speed dives. Falcons typically have a sharp tooth on their beak to sever their prey's neck, a feature not found in hawks. The best way to distinguish hawks and falcons from each other and other birds is to learn how to identify the specific falcon and or hawk species that tend to frequent your area. Guinea pig and hamster. Hamsters and guinea pigs are relatively low maintenance pets that make a great choice for new pet owners. The two animals have several fundamental differences, though they grow to a completely different size. Typically, a fully gowned guinea pig will measure somewhere between 20 to 30 centimeters, while a hamster will only reach around 5 to 15 centimeters. Guinea pig's life expectancy is considerably longer. You can expect your guinea pig to live 5 to 8 years if it stays fit and healthy, whereas a hamster typically lives 2 to 3 years. Guinea pigs are herbivorous, while hamsters are omnivorous. Put simply, guinea pigs are vegans and will not eat meat, although it's by necessity rather than choice. A hamster can eat meat, or put scientifically, obtain chemical energy and nutrients from materials originating from animal origin, although it is more likely to be in the form of insects. Their offspring are very different. Guinea pigs give birth to pups that are born with hair, a full set of teeth, eyes wide open, and the ability to run around. A litter is typically around two to four pups. A hamster's offspring will be born without sight and hair and their litters can be as large as 20, although typically more like 6 to 12 pups. Guinea pigs are a lot more sociable. They are small furry socialites. In fact, this need for constant connections is so strong, guinea pigs can really suffer in isolation, become depressed and even die from loneliness. In contrast, hamsters aren't fussed about hanging out with one another and can actually become very aggressive in each other's company particularly when there is food about. Guinea pigs do not carry food in their cheeks. As much as they'd probably like to, guinea pigs do not have the ability to carry food around with them. This is a trait of hamsters. While it may seem amusing, it's simply a hamster's way of food hoarding. In contrast, a guinea pig tends to wolf their food down in one go and then weak for more. Guinea pigs are not nocturnal. It's often the case that small prey animals, such as rodents, choose to spend most of their waking hours in the dark. This is a basic defense mechanism against predators who will find them harder to spot than in daylight. This is certainly true of hamsters, who will do most of their scurrying about and eating at night. Guinea pigs, on the other hand, tend to just take a nap as and when they feel like it. This is a bit of an oddity, but it has been suggested that this is a direct result of their prolonged domestication. They just don't feel threatened like they did in the wild. So rather than sleeping at night or during the day, guinea pigs are actually masters of the power nap and can be awake for as long as 20 hours within a 24-hour period. That's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.